Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about freelancing. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, which stack or technologies do you recommend for freelancing work? Well, I can't really answer that question as is because uh, it's a very very loose question. It's similar to asking what type of exercising should I do if I want to be an athlete or what type of uh, weapons do I need to wage a war? Uh, it very much depends. Like there, like I have. Uh, what do you want to do? Like what are you doing? Without answering that question, it's really hard to say what tech you should pick. Usually, there are a few things that you need to go through uh, to figure out what a good stack is going to be. Uh, unfortunately, for most freelancers or for a lot of freelancers this might be a little bit tricky unless you have prior work experience and you're a little bit of a senior experience it's hard for you to know all, like all the different tools uh, but uh, usually whenever you go through a project it doesn't really matter if it's a freelancing project or if it's a large super IT company project you have a few requirements you have some type of specification that you're going to set and usually when you set the specification the most uh, this is actually one of the most important things that you can do uh, it's why I argue that any good software developer especially if you want to do it, make it on your own and be a freelancer or if you want to be a, uh, a future like a really good senior developer you really need to get good at the soft skills thing where you know how to talk to people and how and to understand that especially when you're doing freelancing work a lot of uh, the success hangs on your ability to get a good communication uh, going with your customer and get a good specification so you know what they expect you to build so effectively setting expectations and actually asking the right questions of your customer so that you get the so you get a really good uh, spec for what's going to be built and that they understand what you're going to build and that process of delivering, the process of working with you, the interactions with you, that is one of the most important investments that you can possibly make uh, because if you don't do this right you might actually be building the wrong thing or you might not live up to the customer's expectations or your customer might set to put you in a really bad spot because they, well, for better or for worse, like they create a really shitty situation for you where you well, either you have to do more work for them, or they're unhappy with the work, or they give you like they can give you bad references and all this bad stuff that can happen just because you're mismanaging the social aspect. And this is true for literally anybody who's running any business. I think will be able to agree with me when I say that the customer relationship skills is one of the most important skills that you can have whenever you are running any business because customers are it's they are a major part of what you do so ha handling them in a good way is one of the best investments that you can make for as whatever you do with that said what usually happens is that you gather different types of requirements when you start working and this is the thing that is going to decide what type of tech that you use usually you have functional requirements which are just features what are your what's your system supposed to be doing and when you're picking that sort of stuff sometimes it doesn't really matter if you're building like a standard web app it doesn't really matter what tech you use but in some cases you might actually find that well there's actually a lot of things here that needs to happen that are really well suited for one specific language or one specific stack as opposed to another one and then there are quality requirements where like they might have requirements on uptimes or like if you're going to run this thing or maintain it and so forth there are different considerations here where you might have latency requirements and things like that uptime and latency are usually the main technical or the main quality requirements but there are others that could come along as well which might affect the things that you pick and third and lastly you usually have uh, technical requirements where I mean if you are building a greenfield project from scratch and it's for like this little si tiny company somewhere and they're just gonna start it up and then that's it then it doesn't really matter what tech stack you pick but let's say that you are building a proof of con concept for, an, for a company who has their own developers and then you're gonna do a handoff and you're gonna give them the code base well if you're doing that sort of thing uh, they might have preferences on what tools you use. They, you might not be able to use whatever to where, whatever language you want because somebody else is going to take over the main maintenance and the ownership of this code when you're done with it. So there you have another 
thing that could affect this decision. But let's say for the sake of argument that you have none of these requirements, let's say for the sake of argument that you can pick whatever you want and just have a base stack. Then I would suggest to you to use the mean stack or a flavor of the mean stack. So something like MongoDB, Express, Node, React, Angular, Vue, it doesn't really matter. Like I like React, but that's just my personal preference. Then I also highly encourage you to use TypeScript on top of that uh, because a typing system will help you a lot with the um, potential issues. If you're going to do, it depends on like the type of freelancing you're going to do. Um, if you're going to do unit testing and things like that, I highly recommend using Jest. Jest is usually one of my preferred runners, uh, test runners, because it can cut it, it. Like it's it's not like Mocha. Mocha has the ability like, or the other ones. Uh, Jest is very holistic like it has all the tools that you could most likely need in order to do proper testing the reason why I, I mean I can of course develop this further and give you like all the other tools as well but I think that this is going to be the simplest thing for you I mean of course using like a version control system like git and like using github well it might not be possible to use github if this is a closed source type of thing then bitbucket might be the better thing for you because they have free uh, a few boxes where or a few repos that you can have closed source uh, for free uh, and then there are of course other things like docker and if you're gonna run your own infrastructure then that's a i mean i can't cover that in this video there's going to be so much more to it usually keeping it simple is the best thing for you the reason why i suggest the mean stack is because uh, if you're do it's probably the most in terms of personal productivity in terms of finding like learning resources or like f finding help unblocking yourself and finding like libraries and everything you could possibly want almost regardless of what you're building there is very there are very few stacks that will be as fast as uh, as the mean stack it used to be the case that php for example and php is still probably one of the most popular choices for this sort of web development with smaller project because of this exact thing you can be extremely productive in php and i still think i mean php and like using the um, let's say Laravel and using Composer and like uh, and Symfony and so forth or whatever you're using right uh, it's still that's still a good choice the reason why I suggest the means like is simply because uh, it's even uh, it, it has the same sort of benefits as working in a scripting language like PHP but it has an even bigger ecosystem and even more resources for you to use if you want to get things done really really quickly or if you find yourself being blocked or like you're looking for stack overflow questions or practically whatever you could possibly want to do is possible to do in JavaScript and since you're most likely also going to make a front-end application well remember to think about that uh, you're already going to use JavaScript on the front end so using it on the server as well actually has some benefits as well there's code sharing between the server and the and the front end which is a fairly nice thing where you might actually save some time there as well so I personally think that the means like with TypeScript and of course I have other tools that could be useful as well is probably the best default choice for any small to mid-sized um, web product that doesn't have any more uh, hard requirements. Another angle to it is also that practically every developer knows this type of stack, like JavaScript, the JavaScript stack, which means that if you do a handover, practically every company is going to be okay with you, as I said, unless they have very specific technical, requ technical requirements, that you build the thing in, say, JavaScript or TypeScript because they will have developers who very likely know how to deal with that thing, which is a very good thing for you. So what I want you to take away from this is that it's really not possible to say what tech should I use for freelancing because it's you, it depends on the product that you're dealing with. Usually the requirements that you deal with are going to be the thing that sets what type of tech that you're going to use. And those requirements you need to get good at getting and talking to your stakeholders and so forth. So soft skills is a key thing to be a good freelancer. If you don't have any special requirements and you can pick whatever you want, then I highly suggest that you use something like the mean stack because there are tons of learning resources. There's uh, the ecosystem is enormous. You can build practically everything, and there's always a library for practically everything you could want to do if you are looking to speed up your own process. And you will be able you 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 like your personal workflow will be pretty damn fast. And as I said, it's extremely diverse. 
you can build almost anything and anyone who takes over your code will very likely know what to do with it so I think that for me uh, the thing that is still well it's still true but it used to be the mo uh, PHP used to be the most popular choice for freelancing work or a small scale to mid scale web development and I think it still is but I really do believe that JavaScript and Node and so forth is the new kid on the block for doing this sort of work uh, simply because the, the adoption of JavaScript is enormous and having the same code on the back end and the front end in of itself is an enormously useful thing and that's not even mentioning as I was saying how big the ecosystem it, it the ecosystem is it's enormous and there are so many things that you can tap into that helps your process along have a great day